Good to have you guys in person finally, and things are in the right direction. So, welcome back to God's country. And again, a lot of th a lot of things to be excited about this season. Uh, we report today at uh, four o'clock, and then we have our first team meeting tonight at six, and then we start practice tomorrow. But our guys had a great summer. Brad Bylanks done a great job with our team this summer. We look really good. Our players are eager to get back to practice and and put a, a great product on the field for our fans. So, with that, I'll open the questions. Sean, I guess first off, you know, when you look back at last year, your first year, did you get to enjoy it? Um, I guess how did you try to enjoy it, and what are you going to remember about it uh, when you look back at it? Well, I, last year was definitely a learning curve for me, personally, being the first year head coach. And then uh, you put on COVID on top of that. And it was a challenge, but it's something that would, uh, our team was built for. We were ready when we, we weren't ready for it, but once it came, we uh, adjusted our schedule. I look back at our schedule from last year. And we had one practice with our full team, then went to five straight practices without any offensive lineman or defensive lineman. So um, I think we're prepared if something happens this year. But uh, as, as bad as it was at 9-3, and three, I think we, we uh, weathered the storm very well. And uh, we're prepared for this year if it happens. What does it look like compared to last year, this year, as far as the precautions you're still having to go through, like the sanitizer still out and things like that? But what's, what's kind of going into that? And is it kind of able? Well, I think the biggest thing we do is we've been educating our players on the vaccinations uh, along with our medical staff, and that, that's something we do on a weekly basis. And our players have, have really bought into that, and we'll continue to ed educate those guys and to make sure we have the right numbers for the season. You mentioned the summer strength program a couple times now. Um, was there points of the season where maybe you saw that the team didn't have that last year? Like, were there certain games or certain parts of the season where it stood out to you a little bit? Yeah, I think all season long. When you look at uh, last year, we were limited in numbers in our weight room. We were allowed to have ten people at, at a time to work out in our weight room with our strength staff, and and it was it was tough on everyone, especially our strength staff. They were going from six a.m. to six p.m. five days a week, and and you could tell. I think that's one thing that separates us uh, and our success is our summer program. It's a tough program that if you can make it through that, you can make it through anything. And now we've had another a full summer with everyone together and without any hiccups. And you can see now how well they look. And we, we have uh, zero soft tissue injuries, which I think that was a big um, – that, that was the cause last year for injuries. We, we didn't work out that much. And so now we're back into the phase where we can go full speed ahead. David Ware, 24-7 Sports. Um, Sean, you've got some guys back that normally wouldn't have been back, so you've got you know a lot of skill position talent back, both sides of the ball. As you, as you think about this roster, offense and defensive side of the ball, how do you feel about the depth of talent? And I would say kind of focus that on what you anticipate will be game day ready to open the season. Well, very excited for the guys who came back. I think we're very blessed to get those guys back for one more year. And I think you used to look at our quarterback room, for example. We were fortunate enough to get Chase Bryce here in December uh, for the spring. And then Jacob Usman decided to come back for his sixth year. And now you have a little bit of depth at that position. You rest easier at night knowing you have two quarterbacks that have one at the Division One level. Um, and then you start the receiver position. And we're loaded at receiver right now. And uh, Corey Sutton came back after uh, opting out last year. You have Thomas Hennigan, Malik Williams, Jalen Virgil, and people don't even talk about the Christian Horns of the world, the Christian Wells, the uh, uh, Deshaun Davis. Um, those guys would probably play anywhere in our conference, but now there's, they're, they're stacked in the depth chart, and we have to make sure we find ways to get those guys the ball uh, at running back, uh, returning Cam Peoples, Nate Noel, and uh, Brad uh, transferring from Notre Dame that if, if he – plays like he does in the weight room, then and we should be stacked in that position also. And then I think the question will be on the offensive line. We have to have some guys to step up. Uh, Coach Carwell's done a great job of developing depth there. But when you're replacing uh, Noah Hannon, who was a four-year starter, and Ryan Newsel, who's still playing for the Atlanta Falcons, those are spots we have to find. And Damian Daly has had a great summer. Uh, he'll be a pencil that left guard. And we got Isaiah Helms from Western Carolina to give us some more depth at that position. So. We should be solid there. It'll be interesting to see how we how we, how we do tomorrow. And on defense, when you turn ten of eleven starters, um, who are coming off of one of the best defenses in our conference, I think uh, uh, that's exciting. But again, we have some young guys that haven't played much, and we have to get some guys in the game early. And we'll start tomorrow with that. You mentioned wide receiver in particular, the, the amount of talent you've got there. Certainly, you could run through the running back depth chart and, and say the same thing. 
still just one ball on the field. You know, as you guys have talked over the summer about strategically, how do we involve so many playmakers in the game? You know, how, how do you go about making sure, um, certainly given what the defense is going to allow you to do, that you're, you know, you're keeping so many talented players involved? Well, I think Coach Ponce did a great job in the spring um, with that. We meet, the, we meet on this on a weekly basis is how do you get the balls to the playmakers? You mentioned this, that we have one football and so there'll be some games that it could be run heavy or be some games we pass heavy. But we have to, we have, to, we have a rep count. Uh, we have to have so many plays of Corey Sutton, Thomas Hennigan, uh, Malik Williams, Jalen Virgil. And then we have to have so many plays to Cam Peoples and Nate Noel. And, and we can't forget about our tight ends, uh, Henry Pearson and Mike Evans. And those guys have had great careers here and we have to finally get the balls to them. But to make everybody happy, but the, the biggest priority is to win the football game. So we'll have to do what we have to do to win the football game. And in terms of starting the season, um, obviously there are always some players who are rehabbing, coming back from something. You know, are there any of the guys that you're anticipating may not be available uh, week one against ECU that you may say look, see later on in the season? Uh, right now, no. Uh, we have one guy that will be out, uh, Ace Hi Jordan Heilig, who was in a car accident. He's just in protocol right now. But other than that, we should be fine. Uh, Coach, uh, I know you mentioned you talked about like the COVID stuff a little bit. Uh, I know you, guys, you said you're you know, informing all the players on the vaccines. Um, would you say like there's like percentage of the team who has the vaccine at this point? A vast majority of our players have the vaccine. I won't get into specific numbers right now, but I think we've done a great job of educating our players, and we'll follow all the protocol, protocols from our university and from the Sunbelt Conference. Hey, Coach, Kenneth Reese with WatagaOnline.com. Talk about the, the season opening game and um, just maybe how <laughs> surreal that might be from playing, you know, in the stadiums with practically nobody there to what should be a packed house in oh. Charlotte. Uh, it's very exciting for our program. I think it's big for our state. I wish we had more in-state games like this. Anytime you can go to a uh, pro football stadium and put your program on a national stage, on ESPN, I think it's big. And we're less than a month away. And I think it's great for both both schools. And I think it's all it can do is help you in recruiting. And I think it's great for the state of North Carolina. Have you or will you or when will you start preparing for that game, looking ahead that far? Well, we've done a, um, an early game plan on our first four opponents. We'll get through the first three weeks of, of camp here. And we have 11 days. And then we'll start working heavily on East Carolina. but. For the first 11 days, we will focus on our program and see what we're good at. Sean, you brought up Jacob Huseman, and I know it's kind of been talked about that he's coming back now, but just as far as that conversation, was that something he <coughs> initiated, something that you know kind of came about organically? What, what led him back? Well, I think it goes back to, to last November. We're sitting there, we're talking to guys, and talk to our players and see if they want to come back for another, for another year. And he was, he was determined that he wanted to go out and look into the real world and to get a job. And we were going to support him the whole way. But I think once he got his first paycheck and he saw what Uncle Sam does with that first paycheck, that he had a change of heart. And, and he reached out to, to our, our coaches, and, and we welcomed him back with open arms. And I think if you talk about one player, what embodies Appalachian State football, it's Jacob Usman, who has came here and been behind Taylor Lamb. And, Zach Thomas, and, and when he, his number was called, he was always ready. And just to have that leadership who's, who's been here, been through it, I think it adds to our program. Yeah, I think if a few years back, if you were looking at this season, you were looking at a season where there were probably going to be a lot of new guys stepping into a lot more responsibility. But with you know the, the COVID extra year, the super seniors, that's kind of changed a little bit. And I wonder, you know, how do you balance the guys that have so much playing time, but also you know, put that premium on the development for the guys so they're ready in 2022 now instead of 2021. Uh, you're exactly right. We meet on a daily basis on roster management. And with the one-time transfer rule, you have to make sure you're not only recruiting the players you uh, – and high school players, but you have to recruit the players you have here right now. And uh, we have to be creative. And we'll, there'll be different uh, subgroups we have for – Guys that haven't played that much to get in the football game. Uh, but again, we have to get guys playing. And we all know we, we play a physical style of football here, a physical brand. And, and there are going to be injuries. But when, when that time comes, they have to be ready. Good 
David Rogers, we're talking Democrat. Um. <coughs> What, uh, um, who do you see, you obviously haven't, haven't had practice yet, but who, do you, who have you seen through the summer and, and really even in the spring who've made the most progress, um, mo the, the most dramatic improvements in their, in their skill levels? I, I'm not sure dramatic improvements. I think one of those dramatically changed his body is Demetrius Taylor. Uh, last year he was in quarantine for several weeks and, and gained some weight and he was playing around 305, 310 pounds last year and now he's changed his body and changed his diet with, with Brad and his staff and he's down to 286 pounds. And he moves and, and runs like a different player right now. So I think that was big for him to get a whole summer into working out and getting back into to great shape. Uh, I look for big things for Demetrius. And uh, Bear Hunters, are, um, who moved from right guard to center, he's really taken up on the challenge to, to be uh, very good at that position. And just the way he he's handles his room now. I mean, he's a leader of the offensive line, and the way he handles been a captain on our football team has, has been very exciting. Following up on the depth that you have at wide receiver, uh, I know you're an, a run first offense, but does that depth lend to itself to going vertical more, especially with Sutton and, and say Virgil? I think it always leads to that the opportunity or that chance you can throw the ball deep more. But again, we're going to we're going to stick with what got us here, and that's both to run the football and and hard play action, throw the ball down the field. But anything's open on the table right now. Uh, we'll get the ball in the playmakers' hands and and have an explosive offense this year. Yeah, uh, I'll start with DeMarco Jackson. DeMarco's um, been here, it seems like, forever now. And, and he's, he's a great player. And he just got accepted the NBA program here at Appalachian State, which is, uh, you know, the how difficult it is to get in that program. And to be able to play at the Division One level and, and work on your master's degree um, it speaks volumes for him. Uh, Brendan Harrington is just a guy that he's one of the old school football players that studies the game and is always prepared. And he can play multiple positions for us uh, right now. And um, just the way they, they, they approach the game, I mean, that's the biggest difference that the way they handle the younger players. You know, those guys come in and, and they've been through the fire before and, 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 and had some guys above them that show them the ropes. And they're doing that right now. And that's, that's what would be one of our stronger units on our defensive side of the football. Uh, talk about the safety position. Uh, you bring in a guy like Stu Head, who's kind of like that linebacker safety hybrid. Can you talk about him and what he'll bring to the team? Yeah, we're excited to have him here. He's really came in and bought into our our culture and bought into our program. Uh, he's a hybrid. He's a safety outside linebacker who could play um, both positions this year. He will start off at safety, and if um, we need him at the anchor position, the outside linebacker, we'll move him down there. Uh, Connor Davis from the Appalachian. Got to say that earlier. Um, <laughs> You're from, you are you from the Appalachian? What's that? Are you from the Appalachian? Yes, I am. All right. <laughs> uh, you, had, you, know, you had Zach Thomas here for the last couple of years, and you, you know played with all these guys, and then you bring in a guy like Chase Bryce who maybe doesn't have the same you know chemistry, the year-long chemistry. Uh, can you just talk about how he's meshing with the team and um, also maybe what he brings that was different from Zach Thomas? Yeah, um, I've been here. This would be year six for me, and – you know, we've had two quarterbacks, Taylor Lamb and, and Zach Thomas. And then, you know, with recruiting the way it was last year, we weren't able to go out and, and watch players and do in-home visits. So we were doing Zoom meetings with his parents and FaceTimes and uh, just to recruit a quarterback. We went out and recruited about 15 quarterbacks and decided that Chase was our guy. And when he got here, he was he, he hit the ground running. You know, he was very quiet at first and tried to learn how we do things because he wanted to be part of the guys and, and to bring up a – he wanted to be the guy that took us to the next level. And um, I can't say Coach Ponce has done a wonderful job with him this year. They meet daily. And, you know, there's a difference in it without question. I think Zach, uh, he could score a touchdown whenever he took, took off with the ball in his hands. Chase is more of a, a throwing quarterback. Uh, he, has, he has changed his body as well. He's down to 228 pounds right now from 245 when he first got here. But you'll see his arm at practice. He has a very strong arm that – can make the big time throws. And if you go back and watch the Syracuse game from when he was at Clemson and watch some games from Duke, then you can see what kind of arm talent he has. Any other questions? Or is there any All right. 
Ian Taylor, we're talking Democrat. Uh, you just mentioned Chase Bryce and time at Clemson and Duke. Uh, you know, how is it for you knowing you're getting a quarterback who's coming from you know, David Cutcliffe, who obviously, I mean, his track record at quarterback kind of speaks for itself. I think it's big. You know, again, I'm the third coach here in four years, and uh, we lost some quarterbacks throughout the recruiting process, and we had to find a transfer quarterback. And the rules are set up that way. You can have the one-time transfer or a graduate uh, tr graduate transfer. And we went out and, and we talked to Coach Cutcliffe, and he had nothing but great things to say about Chase. We know some good, uh, coaches on that staff who are very complimentary of the way he works. Uh, he didn't have the, the season that he won last year. And I think a lot of that has to do with the COVID part when you're not having meetings with your position coach or online Zoom meetings and this and that. And when he got here, and you could tell that he was very comfortable with the system we have. And through spring practice, uh, started off, you know, not rough, but doesn't know the ins and outs of our offense the first three or four days of spring practice. And in the last five practices, he was lights out. And we went up down the field on our defense, which you guys have been around here for a while, and that's tough to do. And again, he took his game from the spring. He's really got his really – Fine tune his his talents this summer. One more thing: Do you feel like there's one posi uh, position group in particular that has maybe gone under the radar that you know is really going to surprise people this year? I, not really, to be honest with you. I mean, I think we have a, a bunch of talented players. Um, you look at I, I think the thing you'll see most of all is our young receivers. Uh, we're very ex excited about Dalton Stroma and Jaquan Loman. Those guys have just got here in the summer and. And they can really run, got great hands and great work ethic. Brett Strelo, App State Sports. Uh, just with so many super seniors back, how do you kind of project the way like team leadership can work with guys that maybe in the past wouldn't be still be a part of the program, where you have a more even more of a veteran presence? Well, I think we start we'll start that tonight in our team meeting. Uh, we have senior speeches we do every year, and we couldn't do that last year because we couldn't be in a mass gathering in a team room. Uh, so I just think having those guys back here who've, who've been through it and knows what it, knows what it means to wear the black and gold, I think that speaks volumes. And to let our younger guys know what it means to be an App State football player. So that's what I'm excited about we start tonight. Maybe one more, just your practice starting in this new building, keeps coming along, just you're working here every day. What, what's it like having this part? of kind of the bigger puzzle that you guys will be working out every day. Well, very excited and very grateful to Doug and uh, Chancellor Everts for, for giving us this building and all the Board of Trustees members. But this has really changed the game for us, not only um, with our football program, but in recruiting. I think when, you, when recruits come on campus, they see what we have. And uh, we have just as um, nice of things as anybody in our state. So uh, we're excited to have it and look forward to keep building and improving on it. local perspective, you've got Jackson Green, defensive back, and Anderson Castle in the running back room. Um, talk a little bit about their perspective or you know, their, their roles, uh, their development, and, and particularly Anderson, and now that he's had a year, you, you found him on the sidelines at the water cooler, I understand, uh, for uh, to moved him to running back last year. Um, his development now that he's had an opportunity to understand better the, the blocking schemes and so forth. Uh, Anderson and Jackson are both great players, great local kids that uh, really fit our program. Uh, you, you spoke of Anderson. Anderson was a defensive player when we recruited him. And then when we had the, the COVID game, the Campbell game, he was on the sideline and we needed a running back. And I knew he was a great player in high school playing quarterback at Watauga. And he came in, he was a natural. And he's gotten better and better through uh, spring practice of last year and through summer workouts. and. He's a guy you're going to see in the games, and then and Jackson, he's he's bowing his way out, he's bowing his way through competition at safety, and you'll see both those guys play this year.